हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर फोर द मुगल एम्पायर इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव लर्न हाउ द वर्ड मुगल कम इन टू बी एंड व्हाट डज इट मीन आल्सो वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द क्रोनोलॉजिकल ऑर्डर ऑफ द मुगल एम्पर्स फ्रॉम बाबर टू औरंगजेब आल्सो वी हैव लर्न द मेथड ऑफ सक्सेशन इन विच वी हैव इलेबरेटली डिस्कस the meaning of the term primogeniture and coparcenary inheritance today we are going to understand the administrative system and structure of the mughal dynasty that is the system of zabt and zamindars the main source of income of the mughal empire was tax on farm produce and peasants paid taxes to headmen or local chieftains the mughal called all middlemen zamindars and assigned to them the task of collecting taxes akbar's revenue minister todar mal carried out a survey of crop yields prices and areas cultivated for a 10 year period and then fixed taxes on each crop now we are going to focus upon the akbar's policies as you should know that akbar was one of the greatest administrator of the time and one of the best when it comes to the discussion of the mughal dynasty akbar's courtier abul fazl wrote two book on akbar and his administration the akbar nama and n a akbari in these books he described that the empire was divided into subas governed by subedar who carried out military and administrative functions each province had diwan financial officer bakshi military paymaster sadr minister for religion and charity fauzdars military commanders and kotwals that is town policemen so these are the words which were used to des designate the people's role in the society it is quite laid out in this book which is authored by abul fazl who was a friend and a courtier of akbar in 1570 akbar started religious discussion in the ibadat khana at fatehpur city where he invited ulama learned religious men such as brahmans catholic priest zoroastrian priest and etc akbar's interaction with different faith made him realize that religious scholar who emphasize rituals and dogmas are biased this eventually led to the idea of sulay e kul that is universal peace and tolerance towards all religions so by this we get a picture that how secular akbar was when it comes to the religious policy or religious tolerance mughals in the 17th century mansabdar gained a lot of power and became highly corrupt under the rule of later mughal kings the mughals and their mansabdar spent a lot on salaries and goods which benefited the artisans and peasantry but the large scale of revenue collection left very little for the artisans and peasantry in the terms of saving as mughal power declined their servants slowly emerged as centers of power and money they created new provinces such as hyderabad and awadh but in theory they still considered the king in delhi as their master and the emperor basically this means that the decline of the mughal empire set in the 17th century but it was not done like for in a formal way the ministers or i can say these mansabdar and jagirdars have become so corrupt that they have chunked off a piece of land from the mughal of empire mughal empire not just the piece of land a big whole province and they have started governing it autonomously but officially they recognized mughal emperor as their master and the king why because they have a so good and a big prestige of being emperor 
the sole king of the subcontinent India. That was all for the discussion. I hope you read the chapter and bring your queries in the interactive session.